um, American Federation of Labor took over, or the Knights of Labor left off. Um, while the Knights of Labor tried to include everybody, regardless of nationality, um, gender, creed, etc., and and tried to form, you know, large um, organizations, the AFL, because of all the militia, the police, the attacks on unions, and because they, they felt they could do better by singling out the more skilled workers, um, the workers who might have some opportunity to have a little bit more power in terms of the economy. But what they did, they also fought against the immigrants, the Chinese, they, they supported the Chinese Exclusion Act, um, and these are, are issues again that are visiting us today. How do we organize the working class? How do we organize for justice? We see in the White House a person who has just banned Muslim immigrants or people who are coming, refugees from seven, or, or even people immigrating from seven states that have uh, primarily Muslim populations. Among these is not Saudi Arabia, where the perpetrators of 9-11 uh, came from. There is a political motive behind this. And this is a very much a labor issue because we see us ourselves divided, just as the uh, labor movement was divided back in the 1880s and 1890s. California really didn't come into its own until the late 19th century. Um, by 1900, the LA had grown from only 5,000 people to 100,000 people. And there was organizing. Uh, going on in California. In 1903, there was a famous um, sugar beet workers strike where the Japanese and the Mexicans joined forces together to um, fight for their rights and fight to establish a union. Um, they were somewhat successful, but they were also beaten back because California was um, run by the same uh, people who were running the show nationally, the employers who wanted to see uh, open shop conditions uh, make it difficult for people to organize. Again, today we see the same problem. The, we see the uh, Supreme Court poised to uh, try to get rid of the possibility in the public sector of having, uh, making it possible for people to organize. Back in the day, it was a question of open shop, closed shop, union shop, or agency shop. That meant, if it's an open shop, it means uh, you can have a union, but nobody has to pay dues. How can you have people organized um, on the, and filing grievances and getting trained and organized if you don't have the uh, foundation of uh, paying them to do that? Uh, you know, that's the basis of a union. We, we saw the IWW, which tried to represent all workers, felt that it was important to see all workers as one big union, and that's where Joe Hill came in, right, and, uh, and fought for the rights of workers to organize. With this attack today, as it was back in the early 20th century, there's an attack on the rights of workers to organize, to have a union that has the wherewithal to protect its members. So back in, in the early 20th century, we not only saw the beat workers, but we saw the brewery workers, we saw the typographers organizing. Um, we saw uh, the IWW organizing for free speech. Uh, they, they were able to speak uh, in soapboxes and parks, etc. cetera. The um, uh, famous employers organization um, decided that the, uh, they were going to make war on the open shop. So the AFL and the uh, employers organizations really were fighting with each other and the question was who was going to win. Okay. Um, IWW played a large part in trying to